Doing pretty well. Yeah. So um, I've got 7 million pending right now. Which relates to how much GCI? Um, just under 180,000 GCI. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Definitely. have never had that much pending at one time before. Um, that's what I was. So this back of it. So how long have you been a realtor? I've been a realtor well, in real estate business since 2018. Okay. Um, but I just moved here to Florida uh, about 15 months ago. Okay. And when I moved here, I didn't know anyone from Adam. So, you know, starting fresh in a brand new market using the CPS three system and, you know, just implementing it. Um, and so in that time frame, I've uh, pended or pended or closed 22 homes for a total of just over 15 million in volume and just under 400,000 GCI. Whoa. In 15 months, 22 homes starting from zilch. Yeah. Nothing. Correct. Severe of influence. Nothing. None. Right. Reputation. Nothing. nothing. <laughs> yeah. Database. Nothing. nothing website nothing did you have a business no. card <laughs> yeah no no and and knowing the area i don't like i don't know i didn't know the area really in the beginning right i sure. learned it by by going and seeing homes on a daily basis okay okay so 400,000 gci i'm a, how many hours a week are you working to to generate that sort of income um i would say 40, 40, 40 hours, hours a week. week. Yeah. Okay. So is your family suffering at all? Like d daddy's not home? No, no. And we vacation almost monthly. So I, I typically take one week off per month. One week off per month. Okay. Okay, cool. So what methods in the CPS three are you using? Yeah. So open houses, Tuesday, Friday, update calls, ultimate humans, which is like sphere of influence, um, realtor.com, which is online leads. And, uh, those are the big ones. And then I do like listing, let like print media, which would be whenever I get a listing, we send out a series of letters to the neighborhood about that listing. Um, there's, uh, when somebody sells a home, we host a going away party for that client. And then for the new people coming into the home, a welcome to the neighborhood party. Um, so those are ways of, of growing your sphere of influence or whatever you want to call it, but just connecting with cool people in the area. And um, yeah, so those are the main ways. And I would say open houses is probably 50% of that business. Okay. So if I'm a realtor right now, I'm sitting here, I'm like, I do open houses. I've got a sphere of influence. Like you're not doing anything new. Like you're not doing anything new under the sun. So why are you having so much success doing what every other realtor out there is doing? Yeah, great question. So you're right. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun that, that I'm doing. Uh, but what I am doing is, is just being different. And I think that being different is better than being better. So uh, the way that Jonathan teaches the system and, and just how we communicate with, with humans in general uh, it's, it's different. And even though I'm a hosting open house and I, obviously I get different results. Well, the reason I get different results is because I do the open house differently. Okay. It's, it's like a systematic process. How much are you budgeted? How much are you spending per month? Cause I know a lot of realtors, they might make 400,000 GCI, but they're spending 300, you know? So yeah. how does that balance work for you? Yeah. Great question. So, um, I spend roughly, I would say just under 10,000 a month on like all of my marketing yep. and that would print media, EDDM, realtor.com, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, that's another one I didn't mention EDDM. Well, that's kind of like print media. So EDDM, every door direct mail, that's what that stands for. And basically I send uh, a full sheet color, two sided, uh, call to action to the same homes every two weeks, 4,500 homes, just like consistently. Okay. And so 
So if you're a realtor, you need to have at least $10,000 a month to do the CPS three. No, not at all. Okay. So what if you don't um, have, what if your marketing budget is like 500 a month? What can, will it still work? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, the number one thing has been open houses. So you just need the money to buy some open house signs. You know, it's, I think they're like 15 bucks a piece. So you need about, you know, $60, let's say to get four signs. And then you're going to need like, uh, however much a tank of gas, gas costs you. So let's just say it's a hundred bucks because you got a big truck or something. So you got to do that. You know, you fill it up every week. So that's going to be 400 bucks a month in gas, 60 bucks for your signs. And then, you know, within a short amount of time, I would say 90 days or less, like you're going to start cashing, you know, 15, 10, 15, $20,000 checks as long as like you're doing the work, right? So what if you don't have any listings? Like open houses don't work if a new real ah, listing. Great question. Yeah. So um, 90 plus percent of the open houses that I host are A, not my listings and B, not with my brokerage. Oh, wow. Okay. And the CPS3 system teaches you how to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, so Michael, so your 400,000 GCI, does that mean you've sold like a thousand homes or how, like <laughs> how yeah, many homes? No. It's 22. I think I'm at 22. So that that's roughly average price, um, would be like 680,000. I think that what's that equate to, I don't know if you took 15 million divided it by 22, whatever that comes out to. Okay. So, um, yeah, the average home price here is just over four hundred thousand. So, average home price four hundred thousand. That would be like the you know middle mark. So, we want to stay like above that middle mark. So, the middle mark would be like you know the top fifty percent of the market or the bottom fifty percent of the market. Okay. And I prefer to stay in the top fifty percent of the market. Um, it's better better ROI and really better ROT which is return on time. Okay. So I know interest rates are already at 6%. They've doubled in the past 12 months and you've got some great pending right now, but are you concerned moving forward that the increased interest rates are going to hurt your business? Not at all. You know, when you're working in this upper 50% of the market, um, they're, uh, you know, they're more seasoned in life typically and they're go-getters and they're just you know they're like uh they're they're good at seeing what they want and going and getting it so money doesn't matter as much because they they already know like the work entailed to produce it right and i think in that top 50 percent as well and you already said it you're they're looking at second or third homes or second or third purchases so a lot there a lot of those people don't have to borrow as much as that first time is. like a first time buyer is trying to get their down payment that and that's all, like scraping that together and the rest is mortgage right right but these second and third like this top 50 percent one they've got money in the bank one they've got a home they're selling so it's not as big a deal to them yeah 100 percent. and uh like have you had any cash deals in those 50, 22 homes you've sold oh yeah well there I you go know. I don't know the I don't know without looking how many, but I have nine pending right now. And some of those are buy sell, like the client is selling a home, buying another one still counts as two, but it's one family I'm helping. Right. And that's another great way for like in that price point, that's typically what's happening. So like people are not happy with their current home for whatever reason. And so they're buying another home. And then that's two pieces of business, so to speak, but you're only helping one family. So that's huge. And that, uh, I, I can't speak right now, but that uh, is Particular. generally going to happen in the top 50% of the market, right? Because they do already have purchased a home before and they're moving on to the, like you said, second, third, fourth home of their life. So um yeah, no, that's pretty awesome. But the question was, hey, how much cash? Um, of the ones I have currently pending right now, 
uh, I want to say all but three are cash. So interest isn't an issue. Interest isn't an issue when you're dealing with cash. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. How do you respond when a lead says, oh, it was great speaking with you, Mike. I have to go speak. I, I want to interview three or four other realtors before I, I make my decision. Yeah. So I, I guess that would happen in like a, a listing, uh, yeah. what they call a listing presentation. So we don't do a listing presentation. We, we do what's called an initial consultation. And an initial consultation only takes 10 minutes. So it's literally 10 minutes long. Uh, and the first five minutes is about us and how we are different and how we massively benefit people. And then the next five minutes is about them. And we ask them a series of questions to help them gain clarity on whether they should be taking action and moving in the next, say, 30, 60, 90 days, or if they should just stay put. Because a lot of times, moving really isn't the best solution. So sometimes staying put is a better solution. And we like to help our clients determine that. And that's very different from a traditional realtor because a traditional realtor is going for the sale, the close, so to speak, like all the time. Right. And they're not going to advise their people to stay put. Well, we, we want to do what's best for the people. So after these questions that truly only take five minutes, um, they have real clarity at the end of that, which path they should be going down because all people buying or selling a home are, are, are usually like teeter-tottering or straddling or whatever you want to call it. They're like, should we do this? Should we not? Should we do this? Should we not? And in couples, a lot of the times, one of the couple, the spouse, one of the spouses wants to do this way and the other spouse wants to do that way. So it's like, how do, you know, how do we get on the same page? Whether we get on the same page of staying or we get on the same page of moving, how do we get on the same page? So the initial consultation really helps with that. And really at the end of that, you're not going to get the question like, um, I need to interview other people first. Like if, if you did, if you get that question at the end of the initial consultation, it's, you weren't really listening to the client and you really weren't helping them uh, get clarity on what they want. Because at the end of that, when you help them get clarity on which way to go, like, like they don't need to choose anyone else because they already know which way they're going. They're either staying put or they're selling or they're buying. And if they're selling or buying, they're like doing it with you because you just help them create clarity, clarity uh, on a situation that they've been bouncing back and forth um, for a long time. So I know that NAR says that the average consumer looks online for nine months before they take action and, and speak with a realtor. So they've been teeter-tottering or straddling or whatever you want to say for nine months before they've come to the point where they've had the courage to speak with somebody about it. So to help them gain clarity in 10 minutes is, uh, is very powerful. And it's just cool. And, and I'm not attached to either side. Like, I just want to help them get what they want. So if, if staying put is the end conclusion, I'm a hundred percent cool with that. But if they like want to buy or sell at the end conclusion, I'm a hundred percent cool with that too. Nice. And how does the, uh, 10 minute IC set you up for when it's time to accept an offer or, or give an offer? Yeah. So typically people are moving because they're not happy with something. There's some kind of disdain or uh, they're just emotionally not happy with something, whether that's the family's left and they need to downsize. They don't like the empty space in the home, that, that feeling, um, or maybe the, the family's growing and the space is feeling tight and they, they want to get out of it. So Actions are emotion-based and people move because of emotion. And what these questions does is bring that emotion to the forefront and really gets clarity on why you're wanting to take the action. You're wanting to take the action because of an emotion that you're getting. And that emotion you're getting is because of an experience. And so once we know that trajectory, like, then we can help them make decisions based on what they want. Because 
this is why you're wanting to do what you want to do. Now, I get it. You might have to spend a couple grand more in a market we were in, you know, uh, just six months ago, several thousand more to get what you want. But this is the reason you want it. And if that's true, then and you want it now, then this is what you got to do. Uh, and this market, you know, things have, have it doesn't happen as much now. So it's different. But, uh, you know, so now it might be like going through an inspection. And then at the end of that inspection, there's an issue. And the issue needs to be resolved. And, and you go to the seller with that issue. And the seller's like, nope. I don't want to do it. Uh, if you guys want the house, you're just going to have to buy it. I'm not going to give any. And then, you know, we just present that to our client, but we also go back to the IC of why they're doing what they're doing. This is the cost involved to fix whatever the issue is. If you're cool with that and you get what you want, hey, let's go forward. And if you're not cool with that, then, well, hey, let's go find something else. So, so Michael, just one more last question. So what makes you so special that you're getting these results? Ooh, that's a great question. What makes me so special that I'm getting these results? Well, for me, I think it's three things. So number one, it's like, it's doing the work, the CPS three way. So like learning the system and implementing it, like implementation is huge, no matter what you're doing. So like, that's number one. Number two is, uh, you know, like being happy with who you are or where you're at now, like choosing to be happy now instead of waiting for something to happen for you to be happy, right? Um, and so that I feel that we are magnetic in a, in a sense that we attract who we are. And if we're unhappy with our who we are, we're going to attract unhappy people. And so being like happy with who you are is helpful in attracting people who are happy with who they are. Um, and also that goes with like just caring for people, like caring for humanity. So that's kind of two parts of the number two. So like number one is like, you gotta, you gotta implement the CPS three way. Number two is like, you gotta be happy now and you just like gotta care about people. So I think that those kind of go together. And then number three is like, you have to be confident in what you're doing and believe in, in what you're doing. So for example, it's like a, it would be like a, a, a stool that has three legs. And if you took any one of those legs away, the stool is going to fall over. It's not going to work. So for me, it's those three things that holds it up and together. Well, no offense, Michael, but that doesn't sound very special. It almost sounds like anybody could do that. Well, that's the truth. <laughs> so anybody who has the system, cares about people, and has the confidence to do it should have the same success that you're experiencing. That's correct. And just never give up. You know, I guess if there's a fourth thing, which there isn't, but if it there was, it's just like, don't quit. Right. And so for me, like the, I had a period in time where I did 23 open houses in a row and didn't get immediate business from it. Now I do four to six open houses a week when I'm working. So to do 23 open houses, that only takes me, you know, a month at most. And so anyway, like I was doing the work for a month, but I hadn't got like a, a quick result from it. But yet I never stopped doing it because I know that like consistency over time produces results. And uh, if I would have quit on open house 22 or open house 23, um, then I wouldn't have what I have now, but I didn't quit. I just kept doing. It. So what do you foresee for the future of Realtor Michael? For the future of realtor might well continue to implement the cps3 that's for sure yeah um and then also i'm growing a real estate team here uh in southwest florida you so you've got CPS3. 15 months experience in florida and you're already starting to build a team that's correct wow <laughs> that's a powerful system <laughs> yeah and uh are they going to be cold calling are they going to be door knocking are they going to be circle prospecting your team? None of those. None of those. <laughs> nice.
Yeah. I mean, now there's teams out there where you can do those things, but yeah, no, we'll just be doing the main systems that we use. Like I said, open houses, Tuesday, Friday, update calls, ultimate humans, uh, things of that nature, going away party, housewarming party, stuff like that. 